this will be a theory crafting video about Frostbomb of forthcoming, especially about the part deals 10% more damage with hits per 0.1 seconds duration and deals 3% more damage with ailments per 0.1 seconds duration, which means for every second that this skill lasts, you gain 100% more damage because 0.1 seconds times 10 is one second and we can achieve over 2000% more damage, but with low quality of life. Because the longer the duration, the less quality of life you have, but also more damage. And the idea behind it is to use it for one-shotting bosses, especially in the upcoming Gauntlet League. Also, it lacks the orb attack, which means you can actually use Trinity and Sacrifice gems with it. These are the builds that I prepared. The first build is the one with the maximum duration. This build focuses especially around the duration of the Frost Bomb. Here we have the skill Frost Bomb forthcoming and skill type specific stats, duration modifiers and skill duration is 22 seconds and it has a cooldown of 4 seconds. And we achieved that with the following items, for example, Jabba Jabba, because it has 50% increased skill effect duration, but you gain no damage bonuses from this. The Heat Shiver is just for the damage. Then Speaker of the Wreath, 50% increased skill effect duration. Then it goes up to 22.6 seconds. The Alice Malefaction, ideally in green sockets for the 30% quality. Then you can, for example, use the increased duration and push it to level 21 and 53 quality if you have a double corrupt on it and the 30% from the chest. So you get a 21-23 gem and it gets to 21-53. It gives us 90% increased skill effect duration. Efficacy also has skill effect duration and the other ones are just utility and damage. The next item would be just any elder boots, which can roll the socketed gems as supported by level 20 increased duration and the 50% increased skill effect duration. Then also the ashes of the star for the 30% to quality of all skill gems and the skill gem level or alternatively you can use the replica dragon fangs flight with plus two to frost bomb gems damage difference is minuscule then the time clasp moonstone ring they can roll up to 20 percent increased skill effect duration and then you can either take hatred or celery or both or damage boost or you take the time class with malevolence corruption and increase the effect of your malevolence as well as the skill effect duration. Then you get up to 23 seconds. The leash of population is you can have an offering of each type and your offerings have reduced duration, but you stack a lot of duration. So if you look at the calculations for how long our offerings last, they last for 21 seconds. So it's really easy to upkeep. And we also take the necromancer because of Mistress of Sacrifice. Then we get 40% increased skill effect duration and our offerings can affect us with some charms with 30% increased effect of offerings on you. We can boost our stats with all of the three offerings for crit chance and multi, lock chance and cast speed and movement speed. Another strategy would be to get the flow untethered for increased cooldown recovery rate and with the corruption for skill effect duration and then we can get to 23.7 seconds almost skill duration. Then for the tree, first the mastery, must of sacrifice, and all the nodes we use for skill effect duration is enduring bond for 20% increased skill effect duration. Over here, just for more auras, maybe even this node or malevolence stat boosting for increased duration, cold damage, and crit multi because we use cold skill and ideally crit. Then atrophy. 12% increased skill effect duration and chaos damage, which we don't use. Then the mastery for damage over time. We have increased duration of ailments on enemies and increased skill effect duration. Then elemental focus doesn't give us generic duration, but entropy does. Then hunter's gambit has chaos damage over time, increased skill effect duration, and increased damage over time with both skills. Then crit multi again. Then these are our two duration clusters and 10% more skill effect duration. And there are no medium or large clusters that I found which boost our stats, just duration and a bit of damage. Cast speed is not that important because we have four seconds cooldown. And another method would be getting a shadow, getting the ascendancy like clockwork for increased cooldown recovery rate. But we can also slightly negate the cooldown with second wind. And if you use Pledge of Hands with level 30 greater spell echo, 
then we can get up to 40 hits for our skill with Second Wind, Awakened Spell Echo, Spell Cascade and Pledge of Hands. Also, a possibility how to get an additional 20% increased skill effect duration would be Perfect Half Remember Goliath, but it must be linked to be powered. I didn't test it, it's possible that you just need to use like a soul link on it, so you get the 20% increased skill effect duration, but that's one possibility to boost our stats even further. And this golem is used in the duration stacking version for 20% increased skill effect duration. Another method on min-maxing the build is with aura stacking and scaling the malevolence, especially with the hands of the High Templar where you can get a plus 5 with plus 1 to socket gems, plus 2 to AOE and plus 2 to aura gems. But these kind of gloves cost like 300 divines minimum and they only make a difference of like 0.15 seconds. So if you're at a breakpoint where you would get the next 0.2 seconds, then it would only be a 20% more multiplier for the damage of the frost bomb. And if you take it a step further with an aura stacker then we can go from like 25 seconds which is with everything poured into maximum duration and losing a lot of quality of life and with 300 aura effect we go to like 28 seconds with 200 percent increased aura effect we go to 27 seconds 100 percent increased aura effect 26 seconds then for the build that i found the most interesting is the rank one ice trapper who deals like 1.8 billion damage per trap and changing it a bit so it fits our needs of the frost bomb mainly for different clusters which gives us aoe damage and area of effect and crit multi most of the stuff could be reused the main chest we just swapped to duration gems instead of traps and we also took out the synthesis rings with plus one power charges for a very cheap corrupted time class the gaspy corruption doesn't help us here Ideally we want Air of Effect and maybe Harvest Enchant or Pledge of Hands with maximum spell damage roll. In the first setup with Annihilating Light we use Frost Bomb of Forthcoming, Empower, Increased Duration, Awakened Spell Echo, Second Wind and Awakened Spell Cascade. Because we have a skill cooldown of 3.7 seconds we can spam the skill but we can get an additional charge with Second Wind so we're hitting two times. Then we have Awakened Spell Echo, which repeats the cast one time, so we get four casts. And with Awakened Spell Cascade, we gain five hits. And I calculated it times five, but maybe it's just times four, because we get four additional hits. So it's either 16 or 20 times. I calculated it 20 times in the other parts of the video. And if you look at the calculation, this one is with the gem in the chest for the 50 quality. Then our skill average hit is 200 million per frost bomb compared to the ice trap with 130 million. So the average hit is quite a bit higher, but it has less quality of life because of the huge duration and you can't spam it and you need to be smarter when you use it. Then the second version is with a perfectly rolled splash of hands. Then we don't have the skill gems with the 50% quality anymore, but we hit like 40 times now because of the level 30 creator spell echo. If you look in here, when combined with Spell Echo, it adds a third repeat that deals 90% more damage. Just to create a Spell Echo, you get two repeats, and with the Spell Echo support, you get a third repeat. So we double the 20 we had before, because of the two extra repeats, and then we have 40 hits. If you want to pledge a fence, you can farm it from a Ciri. Here's the item acquisition, or you get it from the pack, which you could farm very easily in, for example, Port or any of the other maps and we ideally hit 40 times with the pledge of hands which is quite possible if you have this much radius and you have a boss that's like three meters tall like uber bosses and then you have here on repeat from awakening spell cascade here's another one here's another one and here's another one so you have like in this area it edges into here 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 and here and then you hit the boss like 40 times if you time it perfectly then you can get like 2.5 billion damage per second with an all quality skill gem and the process would be however long the boss takes to spawn you pre-place your frost bombs for example the boss takes 2 seconds to spawn you place the bomb and then you count 
1 Mississippi, 2 Mississippi, 3 Mississippi, 4 Mississippi. Then you trigger the boss, then 5 Mississippi, 6 Mississippi, it's spawned, and at 7 Mississippi it dies within like 1 second, and you one-shot it even through the damage reduction. At least that's the plan. But this build is obviously not ready for Gauntlet because it has no defenses. Also about this build, it uses a large ring, a thread of hope, and there you can sneak in Entropy and Hunter's Gambit for additional skill effect duration. I prefer the version with Annihilating Light, even though it's more difficult for your resistances, but it's easier to obtain or quicker because it has a really high drop chance and the odds are really high that you get an Annihilating Light for your first Searing Exo kill on Request Imitation. And then you can save a lot of time farming. Also for the Replica Dragon Fangs Flight with plus 3 to Frostbomb Gems, with 10% increased reservation efficiency of skills, they go for like 50 chaos to 1 divine, compared to a perfectly rolled Ashes of the Stars, with 30% quality of all skill gems, they go for a minimum of 11 divines. Then another idea, the Frostbomb with a lot of duration has a huge more multiplier, therefore I thought about using flat added damage, so we can boost both ends of the equation to get higher damage. One version would be the Burden of Shadows, because the spells deal added chaos damage equal to 20% of your maximum life. Then Beyond the Life Stacker, the original version of the build has 40 million DPS, and if you disable that and activate the Frostbomb instead, then we get like 12 million DPS. With a 6 link consisting of Frostbomb, Call to Fire, Efficacy, Awakened Burning Damage, Awaken Unbound Elements, Awaken Deadly Elements. If you look at the calculation, we have a little bit of cold, mostly fire and chaos. I changed something apparently. Now we have like less than 12 million DPS. Another version I looked up was another cold with fire. Together with the pyre, my rhymes are on fire. This build uses the frost blink mainly as a movement skill and some map clear and then fire trap for damage and the modified version is this with a frost bomb these 3.4 million dps instead of the 700,000 dps of the frost blink and this version used efficacy cold to fire frost bomb cruelty awakened deadly elements and awakened added cold for the skill charm level but it has no utility and a 4.4 second duration I did not like it too much, but you can convert a lot of your coal to fire that way and use ignite damage and use the 3% increased damage with ailments per 0.1 second duration that way. Another thing I looked up, a build that uses original sin and a spell. And this build was a penance run build and we removed the clusters and it's just original sin. Get an average hit of 9.5 million chaos damage. In this build, the penance brand was in a blizzard crown or the conkifag hypothermia more elemental damage, crit chance. The four sockets we use here would be Awakened Illy Focus, Frost Bomb or Forthcoming with Awakened Spell Echo and Increased Duration. And we have two counts because of the Spell Echo and then we would deal around 10 million DPS and hit for an average of 9.5 million with everything up compared to like 80 million with Penance Brand. Another build but on an Ascendant. It was also a Penance Brand build and if we have Second Wind Awaken Spell Echo and Spell Cascade in 20 hits, then we can get like 400 million DPS. Clusters applied to this build, and this one does too. Just removed some brand nodes, not sure which one it was, probably those. And this one uses uh, the Alliance Malefaction with plus 2 duration gems, you can increase that too. And this build actually uses the Frost Bomb of Forthcoming, that's the only build that's online on PoE Ninja. And it's an Archmage build with Pledge of Hands, it looks okay. I modified the gems a bit, so they are 20 quality. And if you have Pledge of Hands and Awakened Spell Echo together with Second Wind and 40 hits, then you can get like 45 million DPS, 10 seconds skill duration and 3 seconds cooldown. Then a Poison Exsanguate builds into Frost Bomb. Skill duration 6.5 seconds, but you have like no damage for cold, so no flat damage. And then our DPS is like 9000, with 100% chance to poison. So that didn't work out. And we mainly have physical clusters, so we should avoid that. But on here we have some chance to poison with spell hits and 5 seconds poison duration. And another idea on how to scale the flat damage was with Spellblade. We could take like the base from Captain Lance or I just took one of the highest DPS builds with Spellblade. It had like 450 million I think. And if we swap to Frostbomb, 
we get like 90 million. It was like a cast and crit, Spellblade, ISP, Cyclone. And this version, we would use Spellblade, Frostbomb, Forthcoming, Increased Duration, Awakened Spell Echo, Healy Focus, and Conk Effect. And two hits because of the Spell Echo again. And then we would hit for a really nice number on average, 69 million. And the skill duration would be 9.5 seconds. Then for Sacrifice build, it uses Dark Pack, and then it deals like 42 million DPS. And we swap to Frostbomb. The skills would be Increased Critical Damage, Awakened Spell Echo, Sacrifice, Conk Effect, Frostbomb. Uh, we use two. So we lose like 40 million compared to the original build, and a lot of quality of life loss, together with increased skill effect duration, and scaling mainly a sacrifice for 500% damage increase. And then the last build would be a Trinity build. and the calculation, I put like 50 resonance for all of them, because if you look at the Frostbomb, we deal 1 million to 1.4, 1.2 million to 1.9, and some fire damage, so on average, if you heard enough, you should get a good amount of resonance, because the range is kind of overlapped with the cold and lightning. The original uses Ice Nova or Frost Bolts. Ice Nova deals like 7 million DPS. And if you use the Frost Bomb, we have 7.7 .7 million compared to 7.6. Slightly better. But if you use the Ice Nova Frost Bolt together with the Frost Bolt, you gain like 12 million DPS compared to only the slight damage increase with the Frost Bomb. But you can use some other fillers to increase the damage even more alternatively to the Frost Bolt. Also, we have to increase it to 2 because. We used Spell Echo, and then we have slightly more damage than the original build, Ice Nova Frostbolt. So I'm pretty certain less quality of life because we have slower clear speed and a few worse. The links would be Frostbomb, or forthcoming, increased duration, Spell Echo, Trinity, Arcane Surge, Elemental Focus, and you need maximum Trinity to have these stats. The method was mainly I use PUE builds and some ideas I had for like different weapons or the chest, for example, there is malefaction. Then I looked up on lighting light, other skills, then mainly to code damage or different ways of scaling it. And I took the highest damage builds, for example, like this one with 1.8 billion per ice trap. And then I modified it to fit my needs. For example, these gloves don't work on the build because Frost Bomb can't really be supported by trap skills and cluster trap or multi trap because you only throw out one according to your cooldown. And then I start modifying. And making it cheaper. I looked up different original sin builds, pledge of hands, then power touch stacking, got with the original sin. This one was for the spellblade builds, which had like 150 million max DPS and we had 90 million. Oh, this one is new. This one is also an Orc Mage built with less duration even. Another idea was with Olesia's Delight for the 8% more damage with ailments and 8% more effect of non-damaging ailments per affliction charge. And with Roller Cash's Impatience, we can benefit from both the Frenzy charges as well as the affliction charges and scale especially the 3% more damage with ailments per 0.1 seconds duration. These were the Pyre builds for the increased burning damage and cold conversion. This one was the, the, the frost skill and the highest damage. This one was especially for the sacrifice gem. Took this one, dark pack, and the other one was trinity together with a staff. And then I found this one with 6.5 million as being the highest damage. The crackling lens one I didn't see before. Big shout out to all of my patrons. We got the following sub tiers, T0, T1, and T2. T0 supporter, obviously my mom, my sister, and my niece. T1s are my subscribers, my viewers. V, you know who you are. And big shout out to the guild for always helping. And T2 is the rest. Thanks a lot for all of the subscriptions, likes, comments, and views. And until next time, bye bye.